could have in community, in our music, in our the way we dress, the way that we just move through life, the Agatha is moving for us. It was such a very beautiful eclectic time for us, the Harlem Renaissance. So it's something that me as a black person is always just so inspired by and seeing that we are trying to rebuild that within our own community now, especially in the heart of Harlem and really trying to get back that essence of what Harlem once was and get rid of that gentrification. Um, this work was something that I knew that I wanted to do for a while now. I just didn't know in what stylization that I wanted to do it in. Uh, as I started developing over the year, I just came back, when I came back from Barcelona, something just struck where the direction I was gonna go with this. And it was more so like festive and fun and vibey. That was the first piece that I did. Where, when I, like, I think the week that I got back from Barcelona and I was really just feeling just their overall vibe, of kind of it was also sort of similar to me. I was in such a Spanish New York when I was there. Um, how everybody was just based off the community. The music was very beautiful and eclectic and everyone just felt like um, gathering around, just having a fun old time. And that's how I felt about the Harlem Renaissance. So that's what, that was a piece that really struck the rest of this. One thing that I noticed as I started moving towards um, developing the series is the second piece I did, Jiving. I really wanted to play with color um, more vibrantly, something like that I never really do. I usually keep it more like monotone, or not necessarily monotone, but something um, a little bit more softer versus what you see in the development of the series, where like I really played with storytelling with the color, um, because I wanted to, that to signify like the aura and the essence of what each piece was telling. And because for me, light overall tells a mood, whether it's in film, Photography, painting, it can go from horrid to very romantic to very just like beautiful overall. Lighting is such a focal point in art itself. So I really wanted to highlight that in this series of work and the different um, stylization with the color scheme. Also with the, um, I was really enjoying having these stick figure silhouette body like i don't know it's just i noticed i started i started doing it in all of the work and it kind of gave this uh, i don't know what to call it but it's, it's this like type of serene type of feel a calmness where it's like you, you, you kind of get drawn into the piece by seeing the background of people and wondering like oh who are they what's their story um with you how would they add to the piece and i felt like without them the piece would not be so um, special. And I noticed when I was like developing this story overall, how I really got in tune spiritually with it. Um, especially like for instance, like my last series that I did with Ulysses at the um, at Art Full, uh, sorry, Art Harlem, Art Crawl Harlem uh, was with the Water series. That's when I started tapping more into like spirituality with my work. Like, but I've always done it, but being more intentional with it. And this series, I kind of heightened it more with that piece behind y'all at the train station. There's a story behind that. I was on the train one day, and this lady um, was sitting next to me. She just she just randomly asked me, she's like, can I see your hand? I'm like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no trick. Um, she's like, no, no, it sounds weird, but I, I'm like, I read auras, I read hand, like, um, whatever. So she just literally, like, she, she put her hand just like this on my hand, and then my hands just started heating up. She said, do you feel that? I was like, yeah. She said, that's your, like, I felt her energy as soon as I walked in. It's very warm and very, like, very passionate. I was like, okay, girl. But then the hand that she, like, chose, she said, but can I say something? I said, do you have pain? I was like, not in my hand. I said, I'm an artist, so maybe I like, have pain I don't know about. She was like, no, it's not in your hand, it's in your shoulder. And crazy enough, I've been having shoulder pain for, like, five years. So I was like, <laughs> she's like, oh, she's a real deal. She's a real deal. Um, and we just had like a very beautiful spiritual conversation, but I was about to get off. So she was trying to, one thing that really spoke to me because I was going through a lot in the moment, she said, that pain is not yours to carry. You've been carrying someone else's pain for a very long time. And it's time for you to let go. I can't really, she's like, I can't really explain real quick because you're about to leave how to really release it. But you have to find a way to release that pain because it's not yours to carry anymore. I said, <laughs> Mind you, I didn't give her enough information, I didn't tell her nothing, like she just ate me up. I was just like, okay, same day I painted that piece. Um, oh my 
So, because it was just very spiritual and very, like, just magical, like, just how she knew so much about me just by reading me, my aura. So, and I, and I always, I always understood how people aura is it's a real thing. I've had people tell me all the time, like, I see your aura, I love your energy, your vibe. And that's something that I wanted to embody in this work of you may not understand, like, you may not understand the essence of aura if you're not a black person, but you understand the vibe and energy that it gives just based off of looking at it from, from the storytelling, through the lighting, through the color changes, the shifts, the blending. Um, you still get that essence of what I was trying to create. These work. I think I read like the essence of Harlem is woven into these beautiful paintings so perfectly. I think like the nightlife especially, mm -hmm. um, all your work if I'm not mistaken feature different parts of Harlem and, and aspects of the nightlife. Mm -hmm. um, but I noticed um, very importantly that each painting has this teddy bear. Mm -hmm. And so if you could, do you mind uh, be diving deeper into what the teddy bear means and the colors that you use and what it kind of signifies and why you use it and as a you know re reoccurring motif in your paintings. So um, that teddy bear has followed me for a very long time. It's become my signature. Uh, the teddy bear itself signifies keeping your inner child alive. It's something that as we get older, we kind of feel as though it's not within us no more, but the inner child is your imagination, your creation. Your purity and honesty is something that, like I said, as we get older, it feels like it's been diminished and it's gone, but it takes you to shine that light again <coughs> and find that there within you, that inner child within you. The colors out there, the red, yellow, and are the primary colors. And we always say without those three colors, the world would be black and white. So I incorporate that with the bear to also signify that without you finding your own primary, your own colors, like your, your own inner self would be black and white. So it takes you to one, find that inner child, find that inner color in you and paint your own reality and create your own art within you. Yeah. That would be the whole. And with that teddy bear and childhood, is there a connection between the faithfulness of the people in the um, paintings and the teddy bear? I know for, for me, it kind of like, uh, we, I was talking about Robert, and um, kind of like when you're a kid, you don't really take in people's faces, you don't, you kind of take in the, the aura, the, the lights, the music, what's going on right then, like, oh, I remember this face, I remember that face, like, I, even think as, you know, younger, we think about our memories, and it's like, rather, what was happening than who it was, and so is there a connection between those things, you think? I like your perception, and in my whole take on when, um, when I, with this specific series, I didn't want to focus on faces. I think I also did it with my last series too, um, because majority of my series I, I did a lot of portraiture, realism, um, just to study it because I'm a self-taught artist. So I just wanted to like see if I could actually do it. And once I figured out I could, I wanted to start playing with other like type of stylizations. Like okay, I can do that, but I'm bored with that. I want to do something just you know where it's more focused on the environment, not necessarily the faces. The bear. A majority of the scenes outside of this series usually is faceless because that's how I look at it, it's universal. Um, when I first, first did, it was um, Daddy's Little Girl, it was in 2019 I did a painting. It was inspired by Beyonce's Brown Skin Girl. And I was just inspired by the song. So I was like, okay, I'll do a painting just in um, juxtaposition of it. So when I did it, I was like, wait, I can see like a little series of her going through her imagination with the teddy bear and she had a balloon um, she was holding her, she was holding the book on um, the bear, holding a balloon and this oversized uh, shirt, her dad's shirt, daddy's little girl. It was like an oversized button up shirt. And then I did a series of that, of her going through different like realms of her dream world. And I realized like I don't connect with her per se, because I'm not a brown skin girl. But I connected with the bear and something just clicked. I said a lot, of, a lot more people will understand what I'm trying to tell about keeping your inner child alive through the bear, but not in a way where I knew, I didn't think it was gonna be my, my signature. I didn't know it was gonna be like the thing that really got people to know who I was. I just kept doing it because it just kept making sense and I kept doing it different ways. I used to have the bear as the face. 
So instead of like, so I will draw, I will paint um, a person's face and then I will put the bear on top of their face as in like the whole symbolization, like it's always with you. Um, and then I kind of faded out of that to where I started hiding it in different spots and places, like a Where's Waldo type of situation. Also signifying like your life, like it's in, it is in, it is in hidden sight, like it just takes you to find it again, but it's always with you, playing with you and trying to like find you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Amazing. So what is, if, could you dive deeper on what your creative process looks like, where you get these kind of inspirations, um, and if you have found struggles um, with you know, kind of getting that spark of creativity, getting that spark of, you know, where to put the bear or um, how to highlight, you know, the colors and, and things like that. Um, my process, I will say, it just depends. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an observer. I observe life, as you see, like I observe people. Um, New York City is the best place to do that at, is just observe people. Um, I'm always inspired by just, the way people dress, the way people move, the way people react to things. Um, music is something I'm very inspired by, which is why I was so, um, I listen to a lot of jazz um, music this entire series just to really get into essence, but make sure, I was making sure it was 1920s jazz, to be specific, to really get that energy into the brush, into the brush or whatever. Um, I will say when I, I'm trying to think of a piece of, I know with that piece, for certain, when I was doing it. I'm a lover boy, I love love, I love the idea of romance, I love the idea of just romantical movies. My favorite movie, don't judge me, is The Notebook. I just love it. She was from North Carolina, I'm from North Carolina. She was a painter, and she moved to New York for like work and all that. So it's, it's like we're playing, you know? Like, I think that we're here. But just the overall arc of the story of just how throughout life they just, they were so, strung out with making sure they came, they got back together. Um, and just, I don't know, that whole story of love. So with this piece, I know I wanted to I wanted to very highlight it on love. As you can see, the majority of it, it's based off of love. There's like a few, like this one is just, I'm just jamming, but I really want, I started diving into telling it as a love story between two people. Mm -hmm. um, not in a specific way, they're not, they're not certain people, but I just wanted to highlight it on um, a black couple. Yeah. In the 1920s, that's what you see. Like he's like trying to court her here in this one. Mm -hmm. He's in the car with her in this one. They're just serenading, he's serenading her in this one. Um, and he's like, you know, date night over there. That's the title of that one. And, and um, with that piece, and just overall, with my process, I will come up with like, I guess I shall say a theme, mm -hmm. and I just let it go. Cause I remember when I was doing that piece, the the inside of the restaurant was the focal point. And, and, and as I was painting it, I'm like, oh, I'm bored of that. So I just painted, I just like got rid of the whole entire inside of the, yeah. the in, inside of the restaurant. And I was like, how about I put them on the outside? And like, that's like very, that's different. It's, it's like a different focal point and really highlighted the street light. So sometimes that happens in a lot of my work where like I'll have an idea as I'm going and then I'll just like kind of shift into a certain like realm in the moment. One thing I've learned, and someone in this room taught me, Ulysses, is to slow down and consider. Mm -hmm. Because within that, I noticed, um, like my last series that I did, the Water Bearer series, um, when I was slowing down and considering, and if you know me, I paint very fast, and that's something that I, I didn't realize, that I just do it. Um, but then once I got into the residency last year and I was told to slow down and consider and I really thought about it, but what that meant, I would intentionally just take breaks on pieces mm -hmm. and come back with a different mindset. And within that, I've noticed that like, oh wait, I can add this too, that I didn't think about when I was first doing it, when I'm done. So that's something that I, that I did this series. I was very intentional, like, all right, let me not do it in one day slew. Let me like take my time and see what my energy is feeling that day and changing like this this turned into like 50 different cars it was a black car there was a it was a teal convertible um uh cadillac it was just so many <laughs> so it's like but but i enjoyed that process of like switching it like that don't feel right let me do this this don't feel right i don't do this but not in a way where i was like frustrated just like it just don't fit the vibe yeah so let me just keep going until it clicks and then like it finally clicked um 
this piece I really love because I, I went to, there's this old jazz club in, um, in West 4th Street, past the Blue Note. I forgot the name of it, but it's actually the oldest one. Where Vanguard? No. The Blue Note's no, the West 4th. Oh. It's off of West 4th. It's past the Blue Note. I, I forgot the name of it. It's like a very small little, oh, no. yeah, it's so cute. But it's so crazy because like, when you first walk in, it looks like a hole in the wall. And once you walk in, it's like this, literally, like it's just so beautiful and well lit. And it's so crazy. Um, they told me that that's one of the oldest standing performance spaces. Where, they, where Billie Holiday performed, so many different 1929 like, Oliver and Sons people. So I was inspired the whole time I was there. And then that's when I created this piece. I came home and created this piece after that night. I went there. So like each time, like the process just depends. Like I'm really just an observer of life. Um, I mean, like sometimes I don't even know that I'm going home to create something. I'm just like having a day. I went out with friends. I went to party somewhere and then something sparked and it was like, oh wait, I have a vision. Let me execute it now. If I don't, it's going to come out one way and not the other. Um, so my process is, it sounds like a mess, but in my head it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's ever-changing. Yeah, it's ever-changing. Yeah. yeah, it can go yeah. along with your aura that you were talking about. Yeah, before. it's very yeah. free-flowing. Yeah. Um, I try not to be so attached to one way of how things could be. Mm -hmm. And that in art, but in life in general, like, I'll have an idea, an intentionality of where I want things to be, but the process, I go with the flow. And so with all of these art pieces um, taking inspiration from Harlem and um, Harlem being such an old community, such a um, once tight-knit community and hopefully getting back to that, how do you how do you think that your um, pieces have impacted the community and you know so many people have come through the gallery and this room and your pieces have struck them the most. Um, and so have, have there been any, you know, reactions to your art pieces that really stuck with you that really have, you know, kind of maybe even inspired you in, in your future works? Um, I did in the beginning, the last month, uh, the last week of Moby, uh, of Pride, I did a, the, the last week of Pride, I did a group show it's called Moby Fest. Um, and I did I did it within like two years prior to, but anywho, when I did it, I had three pieces up. It was this one and two other pieces. Um, one, I was shocked because the directors came up and told me it was 10 of us in that in that um, thing, and I was like the only one that sold. And I sold mm -hmm. two pieces. Um, thank you. But what really got me is one of the people that bought a piece, he was just crying. Like I walked up to him crying looking at the piece and he was like I've never been the type of person to want to invest in art I always thought anything over like $30 was crazy um, but seeing this reminded me of home it reminded me of my parents and it was too familiar for me he was just like bawling a black man at that I was just like what that's crazy to me so to know the impact that I have in that way and in that same week um i went to a harlem pride um event the block party and i saw five people with my merchandise on like just being mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the crowd and i was just like oh so i did put presence here so like my like what i do here makes a very big deal so i need to be very intentional with what i do what i put out and what i show because people are watching and people are inspired and people want to invest in different ways. So, yeah, I do think it, my presence is very important in this new renaissance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think for me, as a Harlem native, and then um, having, you know, beautiful, amazing artistic folks like you come to Harlem and appreciate it. Like, I, when I saw these paintings for the first time, that I met you for the first time, all I can say was thank you. You know what I mean? All I can say was thank you because looking at all of this, one, because I'm obviously not born in the 20s, but I can only imagine the the luxury, the vibrance of the 20s, and you perfectly capture it. And so um, I think we are all in agreement of the thank you to bring the, that alive, that essence alive, and then of course, like the Harlem essence, because it's so important. And a lot of people don't 
don't get it when they move here. Okay, yeah. Things oh, open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, and so what do you think the future of your paintings will look like? What do you think, where, where do you see the future of the Taekwon going and your process? And, and since it beca because it is a ever-changing process, depending on your aura and your vibe and all those kinds of factors, what do you see that? Where you see yourself pushing? Um, it's funny enough, I have been like, you know, brainstorming uh, where my next uh, phase of the next the series will go, whether I extend this or do something different. Because in February, I will be going to France for a month for residency, mm -hmm. um, which I'm very excited about. So I've been in my head about it, in a good way, in my head, like processing. Like, I want to do something different. I want, like, the whole purpose I feel in my journey of residencies is to step outside the box of what I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to see what I'm not comfortable with and, and pick that, <laughs> you know, and see how I can put my own stamp in that. So yeah. we'll see, stay tuned. Yeah. I mean, France is the perfect place to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it, it's really just like Harlem, where it's, right. it's, it's full and of a lot time, so, and so outside of Harlem, a lot of my um, uh, work, I do a lot of like, like Renaissance, like French Victorian type of style pieces. So I'm excited just to be in a space that I, I have been so inspired by. Like, because here I am in a space that I've been so inspired by. Like, I remember, remember being a kid just dreaming of living in Harlem. And now I, here I am now seven years in New York City. And then, like, I am a part of the Harlem Renaissance. So it's like, I can only imagine what I will do in France, yeah. which is also one yeah. of my biggest inspirations. And so um, you are one of the newest recipients of the Festival of Culture X, Steve Madden, right? Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about your experience in participating in this contest and then, you know, what it means for your career and the future that you were talking about where you want to go? Um, it, it's very impactful. Like I was saying, when I was at the Harlem Pride and I saw people, like, so many people, first off, I was like, why do you have a jacket on? It's hot outside. <laughs> but I was still, like, appreciating it. Like, girl, it's hot. I the denim jacket. Um, but, so, I did a collaboration with the Harlem Festival Culture and Steve Madden, where my artwork was on the Steve Madden denim, denim jacket of uh, their boots and a bag. Mm -hmm. And my signature and everything was on it. I was like, that's so crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, it's funny that my best friend just texted me the other day. Um, she took a photo of some random person in the, in the store. She was like, that shit works like that. It's crazy. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's just been amazing just to see people support it so much. It's different when it's people I don't know. Because, if it's, like, when I see my friends and stuff rocking, like, it's still dope, it's still cool, it's still, like, grateful. But it's a different type of vibe when it's someone that I don't know from a can of paint and they probably barely even know me. It just proves just how important my work is. Yes. They have no reason because yeah. they have no reason to support me exactly. other than they like, other than they like it, right? yeah, or they appreciate it. So to see that impact um, all over New York City is kind of crazy. That a kid from North Carolina that only had hopes and dreams is being recognized in one of the biggest cities that he's like dreamed of being a part of for years. So like, it's it's a it's a very big. So you shared several blog posts um, and updates on your site. Is there a particular piece of writing or post that you feel especially proud of? Ooh, writing. Okay. Um, so a lot of people know that I, I do poetry as well. Um, ooh, okay. Shall I read a piece? Yeah, Please. you can. Please. No, my phone. <laughs> 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 I'll read it. Okay, I'll read it. I would do something that I think is like reminiscent of the series. Um, this is perfect, actually. Three pieces. They all align. They're just short. But I'm gonna start off with the first one. Okay. 
This one is called Sounds of Sunday Rain. Sounds of Sunday Rain brings a serene voice preaching to the choir of the cracked window. The aroma is fresh, it's new. After a long week of chaos, I sit and lay in the Sunday rain, washing away the day of yesterday and receiving the gift of the present to present the beauty of tomorrow. Mm. Billy Holiday in the background, solitude. My heart beats a thousand drums competing with the roars of the thunder. I silence my brain to gain a reason to stay sane amongst the peaceful Sunday rain. Mm. The silence of vanilla bean candle lights the dark room, filling it with sounds of softness. Feeling of hope has been regained. The leaking roof cries, the sky weeps, and still the grass grow green on the other side. In this moment of stillness, my heart sings along the sounds of Sunday rain. Um, this one actually did today. Um, it said, to know, to know romance, you must know yourself. Your favorite color is not blue hues of the sky as the day passes by, yet the bounds of greens you fiend makes you feel seen. The scent of gardenia fills the room where your aura presents itself. Some say you exude such a presence of wealth. You don't take your coffee black, in fact, rather a hint of vanilla imported by the French embassy. Honestly, you'd rather enjoy imported British tea. You enjoy eggs not so easy as much as you enjoy poems that are this cheesy. Love is your virtue and your kryptonite, for you spend your days learning wrong from right. Within all your might, you, you put up a great fight to dream of love within the night. You bask in love within, within all its glory and wits, for all you yearn is a love story that fits. Mm -hmm. And here's the last one. This one's called To Toast a Marshmallow. Requires a desire, the want, the craving. To crave is equivalent to yearn. Yearning for something that makes you feel a warmth that melts the ice that's beneath the heart. To toast a marshmallow requires a fire, the need, the ability, the experience of multiple failed attempts, the trial, and the error. One knows in craving such toasted marshmallow, one is de dependent on the decadence of the paired chocolate. A richness that exudes endorphins shocking the body with the same warmth that the fire blazes. They say three is a crowd. Three is a completion, a necessity, the trinity as holy as the highest spirits. The buttery graham cracker makes the debut and marries every aspect of ingredients into a moment of silence. The cackle of the fire pit is at a distance so tempestuous that the noise of the world seems obsolete and the only thought for that one second is the kiss that I do yearn for. The dopamine has now flushed its way down the veins and created a wave of euphoria. And for that moment in time, life seems but only a dream dreamt from heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So overall, the thing is like, you know, romance and love, and I feel like it, it really, those three kind of ties into the synopsis of what I'm trying to tell in these stories and their love stories. Of yeah. Just like yearning for love. that you're getting kind of, you know, um, intersect with all of your, like, you write poems, mm -hmm. and you model, and you do all these amazing things, I'm sure. So do you feel like that inspiration, you know, kind of overlaps with all, everything at once? Um, it depends on the moment. Like, I know the, when I wrote today, I was just, I was watching an episode of Sex in the City, and I was just irritated. I wanted to see I was like, girl, I, uh, I was got mad. And then started like, I was like, you know what, I'm about this. Like, what do I do? <laughs> Because she was so overall, Carrie was upset with this artist, actually. She's dating an artist in this episode, and he's being romantic with her. But he comes from, he's from Russia, so he has like a really like... All the older ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that mm -hmm. So like, he's very like, but he, he's giving it to her. Like most, most people want romance to be. But her New York ass was just so like, oh, this is too much and all that. So it was just irritating me because I'm like, when you don't have it, you want to yearn for it. And then when you finally have something that you that is actually real and it's real as romance, you question it and you doubt him and you make and you just sabotage it. And I was just irritated. I started projecting. I was like, oh, okay, let me write. How do I feel? What's, mm -hmm. What does romance look like to me? Yeah. So I just started writing. That's like so it, um, in that moment I knew I need to get it out because writing is something that I kind of fell back on. Um, which I don't know why, like I 
remember I was president of Poetry Club in high school, and, and I wrote this very intriguing piece when I was in seventh grade. I was like, oh, what was I going through? <laughs> oh my gosh. And so it was just like, I've always had it, and I kind of just, throughout the years, come back to it and fall, come back to it and fall. So in that moment, I was like, I'm inspired. Instead of doing um, a painting, let me revert and do something in the writing realm and yeah. start practicing that pen a little bit more. Yeah. 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 And I, I love how um, that feeling of love kind of, it, a lot of your paintings have these like hues of reds and mm -hmm. pinks and you know, all those kinds of things. And so I love that it, love infiltrates your work kind mm -hmm. of seamlessly, I believe. That. And that was very thank you. That's very intentional. Like I wanted with all of my series, I want you to feel me in it because it's authentic to my process, to my journey, to my story. I mean, the bear itself. When I talk about keeping your inner child alive, it really birthed from my own inner child feeling lost for so long. Uh, growing up twenty seven times, uh, moving twenty seven times out of my life, uh, going through different high schools, middle schools. Um, different family members, like really having to grow up very early. I mean, I moved here to Harlem at 19 years old with uh, a dollar in a dream, like they say. Um, and I had to raise myself. You know, like I raised myself in my early 20s here in New York City. So, and I've been on my own since I was 15. So, the bear itself, I, as y'all see it within yourselves to find your inner child, as I'm creating and finding it, I'm finding it myself each time I paint a piece. And regaining that sense of childishness in my own life. Uh, but with the love sector, um, I was very intentional with making sure I had those hues of uh, pink and red, the lady in the red dress, and just really embodying what, something that we don't see often in the black community. We don't see artwork that depicts us in higher levels of self. We usually see ourselves in, in slavery. We usually see ourselves, and that's a part of our story, but that's not our only it's story. not the story. So, that, and that's not our story in general. So I wanted to be very intentional. Like, for instance, I did this, um, this old Victorian type of style of series one time, and I remember I was doing this, one of them where this lady, she was standing next to a horse. Um, she had like a big afro, and she had her hand on the horse, but she had a white dress on. And I looked at it, I said, this looks like a runaway slave. Mm -hmm. And I was irritated with myself. So I I was like, what in what way can I make her look real to where she doesn't depict herself as a slave? So I put um, a color purple, purple is very known for royal. So I did a purple and gold cloak over her. Right. And I did, like, so to make it really known, like, no, she that shit. She not, she not running away. She is, like, that's, this is her land. This is her, like, property. She is not property. So I'm very intentional when I do, especially depicting black people, because it's something that we need to see more of. And so in our closing, um, I'm sure this is like being a favorite child. Um, <laughs> do you have a piece that really speaks to you that you could maybe call your favorite? Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of hard because every time I do a piece, when it's my favorite, yeah, I don't think it's my favorite. <laughs> that's but what I what I will say, I think just the meaning behind that piece, the story, the story yeah. of how it happened and how I was so inspired to create it, um, I will pick that for me now. Yeah, my for this hour. <laughs> <laughs> I did that for you. Yeah, so it, just, it just speaks to what I felt that day. Very spiritual. Very like. Um, energy heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I think out of all the pieces, that's the most vibrant of colors. Cause that's how I felt like that. Yeah. yeah. My world is speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Saquon's um, life, his journey, his process, and of course his art pieces. Um, or if you want to get you know personal conversations with him and look at the pieces more. And so okay. I, I, that's my favorite also. Okay, and it seems a bit more, a little bit more texturized than mm -hmm. um, It did captivate me um, when I came in. Uh, but I also want to celebrate you and the fact that you honor that a lot of black American lives, I mean, um, lives that derive from being enslaved, were performative. And that's how we made our money, okay, as a community, um, performative and serving, you know, um, as well as showing up for each other and being that audience of support. That um, performing was, it was more than just a club, it was a religion for us. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's where it started a lot of time. Church was not just believing in Jesus, it was believing in us mm -hmm. as a community. Um, and I love these shadowy figures and how you've developed them um, and your use of light. All right, um, it's, I, I applaud you. I, I, I think you're worthy of being celebrated, young man. Can I throw out a house rule real quick? For anybody that has questions or, or, or comments, do you mind introducing yourself first? We're gonna throw a little a little networking in there too. Oh yeah. Because sometimes uh, people hide in plain sight. Mm -hmm. But this is Ulysses Williams. <laughs> he is the director of Art Paul Harlem, and he was my director for my residency that I did last year of the, of the series I did for the Water Bearer. He's an amazing person. You should get to know him. Um, go to the uh, to the to the residency. residency. It's open on the weekends. From what time? Let me know. This is Tony, my assistant. Tony, no, he's not. not. Um, eleven to five. Friday, Friday to Sunday, right? Friday to Sunday. Friday to Sunday. Friday. It's open to the public. So oh, yeah. Island. Yeah. Go check it out. This one right here, Darian. He's he's one of my good friends. I love him so much. Um, when I said I did a show in Moby Fest, we did the first year together. That's what I met him at. I really loved his work. He's currently there showcasing his and developing his current series. So definitely go and check him out. Wait, and also I found out like during COVID and I saw him on the street. I was like, you're that guy on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> that crazy person. I said, you were walking with your fly girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> so he ended up applying, you know, to the residency project. So it's wonderful to, to know you so well. Uh, good evening, afternoon. Uh, my name is James Edward Beckton III. I'm the founding executive artistic director of the Beckton International Black Theater and Arts Consortium and our mission of representation, rehabilitation, redevelopment on the foundations of arts, entertainment, and education. And I would like to first of all caveat what was expressed, a celebration of you and your perspective and how much, very much you're tapped into what we all need to be tapped into just in general, but as an artist. Uh, this is, I've actually shared space with your work several times this month. This is the second time that I've shared space with you, with your work. The second time I've heard you actually discuss the bear and the bear is very intriguing to me right now, particularly. So I'd like to make an offer, if I may, as you go ahead and further, because I would like to know about the bear. Have you had a series on the bear itself? If not, I would like to offer that because I'm curious about that bear and the inner child that represents all of us. To that end, I do want to know about that bear's perspective. As we see the bear in everything, I would like to offer, what does the bear think and see? Mm -hmm. And to hear you then speak about the, the direction of the words and poetry, I would like to offer poetry in word on your canvas. Mm -hmm. That's just offers for what I'm experiencing in the space of your work and the voice that's here. And it's a, just another uh, realm of exploration, if I may offer, because I'm curious and I want to know about that bear and what that bear imagines and sees in this point in time, if it has not happened already. Well, thank you for that. Um, uh, so actually, one thing about me with series, they're never ending. 
Uh, like I said, this actually started when my very first early work. I did something similar in the stylization, but it was in black and white, and the only color was um, the bear and the boot and like three balloons that was flying in the like wind away from the um, scenery. Uh, so then I brought this back years later. So like to get off, off a tangent or whatever, I did a series called Dreams. Yeah, it was called Dreams. Uh, where the focal point was just the bear. And then I started playing around with that, where even with the bear, I started analyzing him and started breaking him down, like giving each color its own person like personality. So there's a red bear, a blue bear, and a yellow bear um, with him going through the whole series of like dreams. And it was very Alice in the Wonderland type of, it was very colorful, um, just different like random things going on. It's very like what you think of dreams. It's a bunch of, like how I describe that series is where it's a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense separately, but together it created a story for that person. Um, he will always be developed. He will always be going through um, a different state of, of series of minds. I would like to explore him more of just him. Uh, it also just depends on where I'm at in my life in that moment of what story I want to tell and where he stands in that with the bear. So he will come back and be the full focal point mm -hmm. in some point of the story. It's just not his chapter right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Thank yes. you. multidisciplinary artist, movement director, movement artist myself, and I also am a board member with the Becton. Um, but yes, I want to second uh, what he's saying about incorporating the poetry. I'm curious if you ever thought of, even like, you know, in arts installations where you hear the voice or like you can wear headphones and like, like even hearing your voice mm -hmm. say the poetry, like mm -hmm. maybe because everything is a story, like incorporating if you did a series of poetry that you would hear throughout walking through the gallery. Um, I'm definitely open to that. Yeah, um, like I said, I just, I just started tapping back into how important it was for me to flex that, that yeah, part that. of mm -hmm. my creativity is something that was very dormant yeah. and I didn't realize how it was very important to the, to the plot of yeah. what I'm trying to tell, just my story as an artist. Mm -hmm. Before it was just something, like even with painting, I remember when I first did painting, it was just for therapeutic reasons. Mm -hmm. A lot of y'all wasn't supposed to know I was a painter until COVID happened, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. COVID happened and I shifted, I pivoted from, I was a full-time actor and model, and then I pivoted into just, I was just showing my work on social media. Mm -hmm. No thoughts and plans of it being residencies and thematic, like it was never that in the plan in the beginning. And then I remember that year in 2020, I started posting every single day because again I painted very fast, uh -huh. and every day, like every other day, I was celebrating mm -hmm. on social media. I'm like, oh shit! And then I started that year in 2020 with 2,000 followers and ended it with 10,000, just based off of my art. And I didn't realize it was that important. And it went so far to where now Angela Bassett even has a piece in her home. You would have told me that a few years ago. I mean, I still would have believed you because I believed myself, but it still would have been like, you know, I said, oh, no. <laughs> but it would have been like far fetched because I that was never my plan. So yeah. to caveat, to pivot back to that, um, poetry is something that I've been more intentional with now than flexing that part of my brain, where I'm currently working on something where I told myself at least write just a little piece today. Mm -hmm. and like it's like a certain project that I have that I'm thinking about where I'm like. Even if just a few words, just do it. And by the grace of God, every time I go back to it, I end up writing more than I wrote last time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah. it's, it's coming back, it's coming back. So in due time, I will, yeah, maybe, yeah. I will definitely figure out how to mend the two and how they can mm -hmm. coexist. Yeah, I guess I asked because yeah, also as a multidisciplinary artist, I'm curious if you would prefer to keep them separate or have you imagined yourself. Also. Um. I'm not sure yet because I will say my process with writing is totally different from my process with painting mm -hmm. and the story behind it, I shall say. So yeah, maybe in a way. I have been looking at them separately, my, like how I go about it because with my art, my painting art, I go about it more so keeping the image alive and really thinking about just that scenario and how to build off of that 
but with writing, it's more so just based off of how I'm feeling. And I notice even with that, like I go more into like the love world sector of it. So it's like, it's a whole two different avenues. I mean, yeah. they still make sense together mm -hmm. and they can eventually mend. Mm -hmm. But I think for now, I want to look at it from a different world first yeah. to separate itself. So it, has, so, so it can have its own identity mm -hmm. yeah, and then they can coexist. Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny, two of you talk because my original question was to ask, are you going to have poetry with you? <laughs> 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 you tell you the story, and then you also the story tiger, so... Mm -hmm. uh, but then, <laughs> so, like, you talk about the yeah, smart mind, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but then I, I start to think about uh, some basic questions, of course, I can ask you, like, like, like privately, but I wonder... Yeah, I'm April, April child here, so I've been living here for 11 years. I'm partner of a, a sojourner gallery in um, Greenwich Village on Baker mm -hmm. Street. And I met uh, De Hua on Father's Day mm -hmm. <laughs> in a <laughs> gallery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then um, we've been partying and going to the beach so, together. Yeah, yeah. To meet yeah. the beach. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I can ask some, I, I want to ask some very basic questions, okay. right? So I, I actually, I could see some like, uh, like Edward Hopper kind of feels mm -hmm. in your paintings. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I want to ask like, who, who is your favorite artist and who impacted you? So I will say for this specific series, um, if you know, you know. If you don't, one of like my my big inspiration was Eddie Barnes. Yeah. If you don't know who Eddie Barnes is, um, if you're familiar with Good Times, the opening credits to JJ painting of just it's called the Sugar Shack. Mm -hmm. That in fact was Eddie Barnes' piece. Um, actually, funny enough, I did a rendition of the Sugar Shack that is in one of my good friends. Who also name is April. She has a brownstone down the block, and it's there. So it's like um, Eddie Barnes is somebody that I always love the way he depict us <laughs> um, in the nightlife, in the night scene. But just in general, just he just made us look like we were movement. The movement, how, like for instance, the Sugar Shack. If you don't know it, please look it up. It's such a beautiful piece. Um, the Sugar Shack itself, it just looked like you were in it yourself. It's so much movement in such a still piece. I have always been so enamored by just the way he played with light, the way he played with detail, but also made it so fun and festive, but so serious at the same time, really storytelling. Um, outside of him, I will say I have to pick Basquiat out on the simple fact that him being a black artist in his time when he was alive and known was unheard of. Um, or not, not necessarily unheard of, but it was a rarity, I shall say. Um, where like he was known before he died. And I think that was something that was <coughs> special that I've always incorporated bring it in my work. Once I realized that this is my life and this is what I want to do with my career, I don't want to wait until I'm, I'm dead to be known. Um, you're going to know me who I am while I'm alive. Mm -hmm. Just based on my impact that I had in the, um, in the art world. So Basquiat was somebody that I always was so inspired by how raw he was with, him, with himself and he was just true to himself all the way through. To the point where, like, I know if he was alive today, a lot of the stuff that's been exploited, exploited in his name would not be here. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of the stuff has been overly commercialized and something that he probably would not have loved or liked. But that's just the way the industry and mm -hmm. people get money hungry. Um, but just who he was as a person was such a beautiful spirit, and he was just telling his own story, and that's what I loved about him. So he's like also. And then, since I went from so I went from back in the day to like I guess like midday, my current one of my current ones will be I will say um, my good friend Darian. Um, I told him that you're laughing, I'm not I told him that when, <laughs> um, when I first met him two years what, two years two three years ago at Movie Fest. Um, before I even met him, I was just like so stunned by his actual work. And then he walked up to me. Um, he had two pieces uh, where they were like, they were very huge. I think one was like pink and one was like gold. Was it gold? Like brownish. Yeah, brownish, goldish. Um, 
you have to see his work um, to because it's it's like hard to explain. It's like collage, but it's like it. What I just said earlier about it looked like you're in the world, in the realm. When you see his work, that's exactly what I felt like. It's something unique and different that I really love. It's like you feel like you're stepping into a whole nother earth, a whole nother being, a whole nother realm of life. And one thing that I really appreciate that he did was like he creates his own um, frames. Like these are the black rock looking frames where it's like it, it's like you're stuck into a portal somewhere. And it's different. I've never seen it before. And I think that's what I love about him and his work. That it's something that it's true to him. And yeah, so check out his work. <laughs> I missed it. Um, Who was it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, definitely check it out. That's it. I, I have to remind you, you do have the ability to create experiences. They're talking about your words and sound. Mm -hmm. You have done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in my last residence, um, yes, my, um, last residence I, I did an installation. So the last piece, the last series I did was called The Water Bearer. Um, a little synopsis on that series. It pretty much was tapping into the black man, tapping into his vulnerability through um, water being the signifier of the emotions. Underwater was the subconscious mind, and above water was the conscious mind. Uh, and I did that while he was dancing through ballet. Ballet is an art form where you have to be very specific with your poses, but intentional and freeing of the body as well. So within doing that, I wanted to create an installation that embodied that, and I did sand that we got from that I got from the beach when I went on my beach trips, and seashells that we got from the seashell, the oyster project, mm -hmm. oyster project on the Governor Island um, itself, and we created in pearls, and we created this whole installation that embodied um, a whole water essence, mm -hmm. and then I had like a, a what's it called? Oceanscape. Oceanscape sounds when you walked in to really get that whole feel that you were in a different world. So yeah. So I'm correct. So like you like I, I agree with what you were saying. There's something that I am practicing on and seeing where can I delve into. I even did sculpture that that time mm -hmm. I, I practice and played with that. I'm never a person that feels like I can't learn something new. Well, none of us should be there. But even with my painting, sorry, not even cut you off. Even with my artwork, I know that, especially being a self-taught artist, I think that's the beauty of it. I can always learn something new. I'm always, every time I go back to the canvas, it's a new essence. I'm like, oh, wow. I think with this specific one, I learned how to do light better. I've always been into light. I've always been attracted to light within my paintings. But I think I played with it in a different way this time where... I advance myself a little bit higher. So like I'm always open to learning more and expanding. Particularly when it comes so natural and easy to you. Like that's, I am, this is not my voice. Which is why I appreciate it so much to see how very strong your voice is. And then to listen to how broad your voice is. It's just an okay to just be as loud as you need to. Uh, because this, your art speaks volumes and there's a soul in it coming from someone that's so young uh, that just resonates to the ancestors. So, yeah, just keep on keeping on and I'm happy to have met you is why I'm sitting here to hear. So, yeah, just, yeah, that's all. Thank you, thank you. Any more questions? I got one more question. What's up, John? Hey, Bertie. I'm a what's up? <laughs> I'm a performance artist, vocalist, visual artist, choreographer. Um, when I first looked at your pieces, this one here, this one, and then up in the corner, struck me first. I don't off the top of my head. Excuse me, y'all. I'm having a tickle attack. Bear with me. Um, I don't remember seeing any circular canvases in your work before. Um, but then even this one up here made me think a little like a fish eye lens. Mm -hmm. And it got me curious just about the way, of course, you play with color and you may go back and revise. You went back and revised this vehicle. So I'm curious just your process with perspective and how you see all the pieces fitting in together from the, the focal point. And if even like with the car before, if you ever go back and tweak the perspective to fit, you know, all the pieces um, come together. Yes, I think. I'm trying to think of, was there one piece where I kind of shifted the, the per like I was saying with that piece, the date night piece, originally the focal point was the inside of the restaurant. So, and it was very deep, it was like all the way into like, you could see the bathroom and all, and people were dancing, but something just, 
it wasn't clicking. I just felt like it was too forced um, in the way I was trying to execute it. Uh, um, I didn't really have a general idea, so I kind of took a break from it um, and considered. Step back and consider. Um, and then when I came back to it, I really wanted to signify just like a couple just having fun with themselves and having a very cute date night. They're playing cards. Once you hear you can't see it from this far away, but they're playing uh, maybe spades. I don't, know, I don't know how to play spades. I'm judging. <laughs> so we're going to say goldfish. That's what I'm saying. Like goldfish. Um, and just having a good time. So there's been multiple times that I have shifted the focal point. One thing that I am very um, passionate with too is just trying to, no matter how small the piece is, really show a sense of depth mm. in it and not make it so flat. Unless I purposely do that. A lot of times in my portraiture, portraiture, um, I usually make it a little bit more 2D, more flat, because um, the focus is more so on the faces, not necessarily the backgrounds. Mm. But in this sense, I wanted to to show you just how deep these pieces go. Like for that piece um, on the train, like you can literally see all the way to the next cart with the blue light, mm. but also you can see the station with the red, pinkish light as well. <laughs> so I like playing with focal points and perspectives to really enhance the story. Sometimes it doesn't need it, and sometimes it do. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, so I'm also obsessed with perspective and art. And so do you feel like these, um, your, your paintings are like snapshots of how you, what you imagine this scenery to be? Or is, it, is there a person behind this view of what's going on? Do you imagine like a, Kind of, yeah, person behind who is viewing it, or is there a who? If there's not, how do you choose what to put into the painting? What perspective to kind of uh, where in the room to choose? Um, it depends. Since we're talking about this one specifically, I I saw uh, it, that's what I'm saying. I'm always observing. I'm always inspired every time. I'm like just like by life. And I was just scrolling one day and I saw this like beautiful staircase. It was like more of an embodied staircase because it, it can really tell so much depth. So at first, I think when I first did this, it was supposed to be a brownstone outside. And then I wanted to tell a story more so like inside the house. Um, but then also, so then I started adding the colors. At, like the first thing I did was the colors and the stairs. And then I, st I didn't know what to do with this area at first. But then I started adding the shadows. I was like, oh, this could be like a party scene. So it really just depends on the moment. Sometimes it is from a focal point of someone looking, um, how, I, how I try to dictate the perspective. And sometimes it's just a snapshot. So I think like this one looks more so like someone looking at the crowd versus like, I keep going back to date night, but date night, that piece, to me is more like a snapshot. Like someone's like a photo. Like a movie. Yeah, like a movie, yeah. like a movie yeah. scene. Um, and I will say like, or the circle piece that you were just mentioning, that piece um, up top, that was more so from a, a, a focal point of like a photo, like someone taking a photo, you know? So it just depends on how I'm feeling that day and the story I'm trying to tell.